Third, woo, coffee. I drink too much coffee. Um, sp speaking of, how'd you like that intro? Isn't that great? Like this really cinematic Keurig <laughs> plastic coffee maker. I just don't have an espresso maker yet. I'm working on it, but uh, maybe Santa will <laughs> be good to me. So I just thought all these YouTubers have these amazing coffee intros and uh, I just, it's a plastic <laughs> anyway how's it going i hope everyone is doing well um i did want to get out this morning to do a video out in, in nature based on a lot of comments and by the way thank you so much for all your feedback to everybody who watched and commented on the last video um feeling really good about this and um so to that point, I did want to go out. I brought my camera. I drive my son to school. I have my camera with me, my Canon M50, if anyone's wondering. It doesn't like the cold um, where I am in central Ontario here in Canada. So what do I want to talk about today? Um, I kind of had this, this idea that grew throughout the week. Um, and that was opportunities for success that aren't necessarily specific to having amazing quality music. And I don't mean to replace having great music and really well produced and applicable. I think that's always important. So don't misunderstand me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some examples of opportunities I've had that weren't necessarily be just because of the music. Um, but I don't want to suggest that the music wasn't great, but these things got me the gig anyway. Um, I think there always has to be, um, there always has to be great quality music and it has to meet the standards and quality control of of whoever it is the publisher is that you're you're dealing with or the opportunity music supervisor um so I, I don't mean to suggest in any of this that you can't you can slack on quality so the first i guess example i would give is that and this has happened a couple times with you know varying details and, and characters <laughs> but um one is that I've, I've had someone come to me for work um, to do a job. I wasn't able to do it. And I was able to refer somebody else who not only could do the job, knocked it out of the park. Um, quite likely better than I would have in the first place. Um, and what ended up happening was instead of me shutting the door on work with this, this person, who I kind of already had a little bit of a relationship with anyway. So to be fair, there was a bit of trust built there. Um, it, I mean, that also speaks to the fact that they probably had a million other resources they could have gone to, but was able to trust me in, um, you know, considering the, the person I put forward. Um, I still, to this day, do tons of work with this person. Um, and in the end, it, it, it didn't shut any door. In fact, if anything, it kind of helped build that relationship. So if you can solve a problem, for somebody and help them out um, and there's a million different ways that that could happen um, i'm just kind of giving my experience of it but if you can solve a problem help somebody out um, and maybe they're maybe they're a library or music supervisor maybe it's just somebody in the industry uh, in a different position who will return that favor with kindness down the road um, so i could have said well if i can't do it i'm not helping any anybody else out that i know but what, what good does that do? Does that really get me ahead at all? Um, instead of that being supportive and helping the person who asked me to do the job, as well as giving someone else a leg up or an opportunity, um, it's a win-win for everybody. So if you can help solve somebody's problem, um, hopefully they'll remember that in the, in the future. I, I don't do it for, um, you know, don't do it with an expectation of, well, now you owe me. But quite often that is how things work out in the end so if you can solve someone's problem um do that it's an old it's an old business concept cliche thing but it's it's true 
The second one, you'll kind of sense that these are all somewhat of a, a theme, I guess, or there's a, a thread that ties them all together. And that, that's the whole point of all this. Um, but two is very similar to one um, in the sense that I've had lots of opportunities where somebody without me knowing has forwarded my name to an opportunity. The point being is many cases, these are people I've helped in the past. So uh, in this case, I've been the recipient of karma, I guess. That is to say, if you're in a position to help somebody and it doesn't put you out too much, um, I personally would do that. Now, I, I realize that's a fine line uh, because there are a lot of very entitled um, people out there who want more than just your time. They want your information. They want all everything that you've worked for over the years um, to thinking that that will fast track them. That's a whole other discussion. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, under this, this idea that is kind of a family help the, your fellow producer out kind of thing, if you can, um, it's worked out in my favor, um, positively in the, in the past. Um, sure, I still get those emails and, and, and <laughs> demands, those DMs, uh, you know, who do you work with and who, where, where, where's the paying jobs and all kinds of stuff. But um, for the most part, I've made a lot of friends and subsequently a lot of great opportunities because I chose to help people out when, when I could. Um, you know, that, of course, if it's not a, a detriment to yourself. So that's number two, um, that, you know, I've received opportunities again, not necessarily because of my music, my music at a certain point obviously needed to, um, count because I wouldn't have got the jobs if my music wasn't on par. But as I said in the beginning, uh, quality is kind of expected. It, it needs to be there, but even just getting the call or the email or, or whatever, um, you know, that wasn't because of my music. That was because of a relationship. So this third one I think would be unique to each one of us. Um, so I'm, I'm not suggesting you, you know, follow this path and then do this blindly. Um, I'm just sharing my experience with, with this, which is spec work. Um, if I think about all the, the, you know, the sum of all the, the times I've, I've done spec work with no, no front end money. I feel it was a positive, um, you know, the path for me to follow in collectively because some didn't pan out. I mean, that's, that's the known risk, right? That's what spec work is. It might, it might not work out how you think some things are not, you know, uh, guaranteed. So, and then it could be a, an album for a library, but there's a million other scenarios or, um, you know, jobs that, that could be spec, right? It could be a film, it could be short, uh, a short film, a documentary. Uh, a lot of things that require you to sit at your DAW and create music for that necessarily is not paid up front. So that, that, that's kind of number three, cause I can feel myself going off the path here. Spec work has, has worked positively for me. Um, and in the, the, I guess, reward of it has less to do about, has less to do with the, the quality of my music or having gotten those jobs was less about the quality of my music. Um, and more so about the relationship building. So that's my, that's my wild card that maybe fits into all this. And um, four, this is, this is me repeating myself. If any of you have watched any of my old videos, which is don't be difficult to deal with. Um, I've had quite a few, I think, um, I had to count, but volume, volume twos of albums I've done. Um, because yes, if the album performs, there's an opportunity for a second album, but I'm not necessarily guaranteed to be the composer on that volume two. It, it makes sense um, thematically, right? But um, as far as sound palette and, and ability and that kind of thing. But if I was difficult to work with, most publishers have endless amounts of other composers that could probably pull off the job quite convincingly. Um, so it really pays, um, to not be difficult <laughs> to work with common sense. Right. Um, but we all know people that are not easy to deal with. I'm sure we've all dealt with them and there's not necessarily any logic or explanation to why they're so difficult or have a chip on their shoulder, but they're right there. Um, try not to be that person 
for a, a lot of reasons. Uh, one, because you don't want to blow any future opportunities like volume twos or follow-ups to, to jobs and albums you've worked on. Um, but also because the industry is way, way smaller than, than you realize. Um, I've said this before, and again, it's worth mentioning. Um, a lot of these publishers all know each other. You just gotta go on LinkedIn and, and find a publisher and you can see in, in their connections who they're connected with. And you might think that they're competitors. They're not, they're colleagues. They, they all work in the same industry and, and help each other. And um, anyway, again, a <laughs> whole other rabbit hole, but just try not to be difficult to, um, to work with. I know issues can come up and I've had them myself, challenges. Uh, where it's it's really hard. You got to just sit back and, and think about the, the bigger uh, picture and, and perspective. Maybe try and get in their head if there's a, a you know a challenge or or something that, that you disagree on. Um, just try and be really rational about it. It's it's really hard in the, in the moment when the emotions are all there. But um, again, it's not necessarily about the music, um, although it. Yes, it, every one of these, the music does tie in, but it, meaning that it's expected that the music is a certain quality, but everything I'm explaining are things above and beyond that, that music, like being, um, you know, being easy to work with, or, or at least able to get along with. Um, that has, I think, think done me well. Um, <laughs> I'm sure not everybody likes me, but I'm, I try to be pretty easy to get along with, uh, in a, in a working setting. And, um, it, it's, it'll pay it'll pay back this last one i can again give more than one example of times where i've been turned down for a job or rejected from a publisher um, only to down the road end up doing tons of work for those those people uh, after having been rejected where, where this is going is though exercise humility and gratitude in those cases where you've been rejected i know we can all be emotionally tied to our music and maybe it's wor your best work and you think it's incredible people just simply might not agree um, and for a number of reasons not that it doesn't hit them in the heart kind of thing it might not be applicable for what they're looking for um, so in those cases um, quite often at least how i've always treated it is um, just a, a very polite and short reply saying thank you so much for the opportunity and the consideration. Um, just, just be humble, be, be gracious of their time and, and consideration in the first place. Um, and maybe there's an opportunity down the road. Again, I know I've said this in other videos, but maybe there's an opportunity down the road to submit to them again. Um, or, or you might have an in, you might develop a, a you know, a relationship or, or through growing your network, find somebody who's in the inside, who is able to pull you in uh, through the side door <laughs> or something like that. Whatever the gig, just be grateful um, is really <laughs> what I'm trying to say. And again, a lot of times it's, um, again, not about the music because if you, <laughs> you send them back an email, um, you know, letting them have it, uh, you know, I guarantee you that <laughs> they're not gonna call in the future, right? Um, just burning that bridge. So that's, uh, that's my thought on that, that last one. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much always, uh, for tuning in. Um, if you have experiences you want to share, please do comment below. I will do my best to, to reply to every comment. Um, sometimes it's a little more challenging than others, but, um, just know that I'm always grateful for, for your comments. Um, whether, whether you agree or disagree, that's totally cool. Um, I just, hopefully some of this has been, um, you know, helpful and, uh, thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you next week.